Local reaction to the latest overseas as Israel weighs a response following Iran's attack over the weekend. This comes after Iran claims an Israeli airstrike killed numerous Iranian officials in Syria. Today, Israel's foreign minister says he's leading a diplomatic offensive against Iran to ease tensions between the two countries. Natalie Kuchko joins us with the response from local leaders in the Jewish community who are keeping a close watch. Natalie. Teresa, I spoke to the head of the Jewish Federation of Greater Rochester, Meredith Dragon, today, who routinely visits Israel and was last there in February. Now, while a number of unknowns remain on the future of the war and Israel's response, one thing she says remains certain, and that is the resilience of its people. Life will never be back to normal anytime soon, but people are trying to live their lives while recognizing that there's still a lot of trauma and pain and and um, and suffering in the region. As the U.S. House Speaker has outlined a plan to pass aid for Israel through Congress, a response toward Iran's retaliatory attack may be in sight. Unfortunately, with the help of incredible allies like the United States and Great Britain, France um, and Saudi Arabia and Jordan, um, what could have been an incredibly devastating attack was thwarted. Um, you know, 99% of the missiles drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles um, never even made it into Israeli airspace. And the ones that landed did minimal damage. So, you know, in a moment where Israel was still reeling from October 7th and obviously a, a war waged on them by terrorism, um, you know, I, Iran, which has been the proxy for, for many of these terrorist groups, um, really tried a very blatant attack and, and fortunately was not successful. But it was it was a scary moment, certainly. CEO of the Jewish Federation of Greater Rochester, Meredith Dragon, says she's grateful the attack was not as destructive. As the war with Hamas continues, the neglect of a ceasefire agreement, she says, remains at the forefront. As the missiles were being shot by Iran, Hamas once again walked away from a ceasefire offer by Israel. It was a real ceasefire offer, and Hamas walked away. So it's deeply concerning that Hamas continues to decline a ceasefire agreement and that the hostages are still held in captivity. And Dragon says that is exactly among the most concerning points here. We are nearing 200 days where 133 hostages are still being held captive with their whereabouts still unknown. Six of them Americans. She is hoping to visit Israel again in the coming weeks, hopefully before summer on behalf of the Jewish Federation. Teresa, back to you.